The former United States President Donald J. Trump is not stranger to the justice system. He has currently been embroiled in a 38 count of falsifying business records and conspiracy. His closest links have also suffered the same fate, with Michael Cohen, his former lawyer, pleading guilty in the hash money payment to Stormy Daniels and the CEO of Army Corp, David Pecker, wound up entering into a non prosecution agreement with the FBI for hash payment to another adult film star. While Alan Weisenberg, Trump Organization CFO, also served time in Rikers Island prison, albeit for a short time. While these cases lift the veil on the covert underworld of billionaires' proclivities, it just keeps getting worse. As a further entourage of Trump, one who has been dubbed America's mayor, known for being a political power broker, has been implicated in a lawsuit at the Supreme Court State of New York. The lawsuit alleges that the former mayor of New York City and the former United States Attorney for Southern District of New York abused his power in a wide range of sexual assaults and harassment claims. It all started in September 2016 when a Columbia University graduate with 22 years of experience in business development, associate producing and communications, Ms. Noelle Dunphy, who was a skilled businesswoman who had a consulting firm, the strategic consulting that she established in 2001, met America's mayor and the least favorite reveal on the mass singer Rudy Giuliani in September 2016 at the lobby of Trump Tower in Manhattan. In the brief interaction at the lobby, Giuliani was smitten and engrossed in the final details of Miss Dunphy work and life. Rudy Giuliani later on discussed the prospects of an employment opportunity for her to work for him. Following Giuliani's interest in hiring Miss Dunphy, he gave her his business card and asked that she contact him to iron out her employment details. However, she never contacted him and initially had no intention of working with him. Rudy Giuliani, however, tracked her down four years later. On or about January 2019, Rudy Giuliani sent Miss Noel Dunphy an unsolicited Facebook message and friend request. Miss Dunphy seemingly accepted the friend request and Rudy Giuliani wasted no time in inviting her to a formal interview for the position of business development director at his organization. The job interview took place in Florida. On 21st January 2019, Giuliani interviewed Miss Dunphy at the Trump International Golf Club of West Palm Beach, Florida. In the interview, they discussed Miss Dunphy's prowess in business, her extensive career, and also new ways to generate revenue streams. Giuliani, who seemed intrigued, offered her a job as director of business development. Also, her job description included being his executive assistant with duties such as planning travel arrangements, managing his communication, which included writing speeches and public relations, which meant she was working on his public image. Miss Dunphy preferred solutions in generating revenue streams. She proposed several ways such as creating a podcast, creating a Netflix series, documentaries and other similar endeavors. Following these propositions, Giuliani gave Miss Dunphy an equivocal permission to record her interactions with him anytime and anywhere. As the parties culminated on the terms of employment, while ironing out her payment, which was a million dollars per year, in a rather unorthodox request, he proffered a scheme that Miss Dunphy should defer her one million dollar payment salary and keep her employment discreet. This is because Giuliani was embroiled in a divorce. In a bid to covertly hide his money from his ex-wife, he requested that she defer her payment as his ex-wife and her lawyers were watching his cash flow. He also argued that her employment was to be discreet as he painted his ex-wife as a jealous maniac who would attack and retaliate against any female employee that Giuliani hired. But he assured her that his divorce would be finalized any day now. Giuliani also tapped into his inner savior complex and offered to represent her pro bono in her legal dispute after learning that she was a survivor of domestic abuse. On 25th February 2019, Giuliani via email acknowledged that he had been retained to offer his legal services pro bono since January 21st 2019 by Miss Noel Dunphy as her attorney to advise and represent her on all legal matters and to analyze legal issues of past legal infringements and presently pending in court. However, all this was just a ruse and a pretext to initiate a quid pro quo intimate relationship with Miss Noel Dunphy. Just days after her formal interview, Giuliani required Miss Dunphy to attend a work-related meeting with Giuliani's Ukrainian associates. During the meeting, Giuliani excessively drank and pressured Miss Dunphy to drink. Upon the conclusion of the meeting, 
with the Ukrainian associates, Giuliani ordered his bodyguards to take another car. After the bodyguards left, he kissed Miss Dunphy. They rode in the back of his limousine that was dropping her off at her residence. Once they got to her house, Giuliani sheepishly asked if he could enter her house. However, she declined and thanked him for the opportunity to work for him. As he was just about to depart, Giuliani told Miss Dunphy in a particularly cringeworthy manner that since they would be working in different locations, she should send him flirtatious photos. He left and in that evening he called her five times. And thus it began the insatiable demand for sexual gratification. And the chicanery of his interest into a domestic abuse legal case began. As her legal representative, he prodded into the finer details of her case. However, in a rather distasteful manner, he prodded into the explicit details concerning her sexual proclivities, which left Miss Dunphy perturbed by these incessant and inane questions and as for relevance, he claimed it was pertinent to the case, only that it wasn't. His sex fiend actics were just showing up. He would also double down on his antics by making incessant calls to Miss Dunphy at least 14 times in a day. She was to be on his back and call. On January 25, 2019, Giuliani flew Miss Dunphy to New York. Giuliani met her at the airport with his security. They had a business dinner later on and planned to travel to the office for work that upcoming Monday. That night, Giuliani propositioned Miss Dunphy to stay in his guest suite at his Upper East Side apartment. She declined and stated that she had family and friends with whom she would stay with. However, Giuliani insisted and she gave in due to undue pressure. Upon arrival, Miss Dunphy was perplexed to find that Giuliani had alcohol beverage ready. He offered her scotch but she declined. Being relentless, he poured both them glasses of red wine. She got intoxicated and retired to her suite. She took a shower and upon getting out of the shower, she was startled to find Giuliani in the room. She asked for some privacy as she wanted to get dressed. However, he did not leave. He proceeded to sit on the bed and pull down his pants. He thereafter pulled her head onto his nether region without obtaining her consent. He held her by her hair and subdued her into submission into performing oral sex. Following the incident, Miss Dunphy asked Giuliani for the name of the human resources director at the organization as she considered reporting the incident. However, in his macadocious element, he asserted that he did not have a HR department and bragged of his affiliation with President Trump and in a not so subtle threat, he asserted that he had private investigators who would punish anyone who complained. Over the following days, they worked at his residence and he added his email account onto Miss Dunphy's computer. She therefore had access to his email account that contained information that was believed to be highly privileged, confidential and sensitive. He never asked her to sign a non-disclosure agreement nor a confidentiality agreement. She also added additional security features and measures to secure the email. On January 28, 2019, Rudy Giuliani introduced Ms. Dunphy as his new employee to her would-be colleagues at his office. She will continue working at the office. She even negotiated and regained a better plan and travel membership with Jet Smarter. She also helped prep Giuliani on his upcoming Fox interview with Roger Isles, who was facing sexual assault claims at the time. As part of her PR job description, she tried to influence him not to partake in the interview but he was persistent and therefore she media trained him to be evasive in regards to certain topics that would hurt his reputation miss danfi however had a short stint at the office because giuliani aggressively insisted that she work mostly at his apartment could he be more obvious stand by giuliani's intentions couldn't have been more clearer than on a sunny day he would demand that miss danfi work naked in a bikini or in short shorts with an american flag on them that he had bought her. While she wasn't at his residence working, they would work remotely via video conferences in which he would ask her to disrobe, that is being naked, and he would be visibly seen touching himself. The Bill Clinton homage. He held up a mirror to former US President Bill Clinton as he would often require Miss Danfi to go down on him while he took phone calls, as this would mirror the Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, the all to known White House affair. It wasn't just the dignity and self esteem that Miss Dunphy was hurting, her pockets were also hurting. This is because of the agreed terms and conditions to defer her $1 million salary payment per year. She requested for her salary payment, however, when Giuliani wasn't saying his divorce would be settled any day now, too, he would on occasion pay Miss Dunphy in no increments of $5,000. As on 1st February 2019, he paid her. $4,000. This is despite her being in a meeting with him in which a $72 billion gas deal with China was being discussed. 
So prominent was the deal that Ms. Dunphy discussed with Giuliani about registering under the Foreign Agents Restriction Act. However, Giuliani urged that he was above the law and that even if he broke the law, he had immunity. Worse still, while she wasn't getting paid, Giuliani asked her to refer to him prison inmates who were seeking presidential pardon. She alleges that Giuliani was selling pardons for $2 million, which she stated that he split between him and President Trump. He asked her to be very cautious and not refer prison inmates who would have to go through the normal channels of the office of the pardon attorney, as correspondence leading to that office would be subject to disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act. Giuliani upped the ante when it came to his theatrics, with more incessant calls and isolating her from fellow colleagues and having her require his approval before communicating with anyone. Meanwhile, his communication with her took a turn for the worse. On February 11, 2019, he became even more possessive with texts such as your mind and nobody will have you now. His unrequited love language took a slow descent into a constant barrage of insults which included names such as and so on and so forth. He also attempted to force her to watch BDSM scenes in movies. He was prompting Miss Dunphy to act out the BDSM scenes with him. During one of their lack of consent scenes, he would refer to her as his daughter. He also became very violent towards her, smacking her and telling her that it was cute. He would occasion bring up her pending domestic abuse case and this time he made her an offer he wanted her to make a deal with the devil as if the orbit did not revolve around him much he asked her to withdraw her case as he felt that it was interfering with his sex life he promised her three hundred thousand dollars in lieu of her waiving her legal rights against her former abusive partner and to sweeten the pot he stated that he would pay her she would love him like crazy and not in those words stand by as the plot still thickens on April April 29, 2018, she discovered that privileged information about her domestic violence case that was subject to attorney-client privilege was being shared with Mariah Ryan, who was the interim CEO of one of his organizations. He had revealed her identity that was hidden in court documents as Jane Doe due to the severity of the domestic abuse case. On 19th November 2019, Miss Dunphy went to Giuliani's home office to discuss her employment. Giuliani, who constantly introduced her to others as a chief consultant or employee, promised to officially put her on the books and iron out her employment situation. Ms. Dunphy also informed Giuliani that, F that the FBI had visited her home to question her. He grew worried and was skeptical that his friend, Lev Palmer's, was standing on him with regards to an ongoing FBI investigation that he was embroiled in. He demanded her not to cooperate with the FBI and made veiled threats that those who did cooperate would get totally destroyed. Things seemed to cool down from the veiled threats and on that day he confessed that he was in love with other employees which included a 20-year-old employee and Maria Ryan, the interim CEO he had confided in and broke the attorney client privilege but he was mostly concerned about one of them whom he claimed was allegedly blackmailing him in relation to his acquiring allegedly ukraine foreign money illegally and that she had paper trails on him in 2020 following trump's loss of the presidential election to joe biden and just a day short of the capitol hill riots giuliani confided in miss dunphy of the plot to claim election fraud and votes were rigged in january 2021 miss dunphy began to see the forest for the trees she hadn't been paying her salary for over two years despite Giuliani's lavish lifestyle. Following Capitol Hill's insurrection on Jan 7, Miss Stanfi contacted Giuliani expressing her fear of him and standing up for herself and this led to on Jan 31st, the day she was fired. Following her indiscriminate employment termination, Miss Stanfi sued Rudy Giuliani. In the lawsuit, she argued that she was protected under New York laws as an employee even though she was devoid of a contract in writing. She sued for breach of contract of her oral employment agreement to work as Giuliani's director of business development and also as his executive assistant. She also argued that her $1 million salary per year was also enforceable. She equally sued Giuliani for unjust enrichment through her unpaid wages from 2018. She alleges that she worked for him for two years and she should have been paid $2 million. However, Giuliani only paid her $12,000 in cash and didn't reimburse her for all the business expenses, so she therefore calculated her amount owed as one million nine hundred and eighty eight thousand dollars she equally sued him for working under hostile working conditions where she was constantly subjected to sexual misconduct incendiary remarks which were anti-semitic misogynistic and racial slurs she also sued for gender discrimination and sexual harassment and she equally sued 
for sexual assault, which included battery, assault, and other non-consensual acts. Building up on working on a hostile work environment, she also sued for breach of fiduciary duty in violation of the attorney-client privilege in disclosing her name in the domestic violence dispute and also in her employment employer-employee relationship in which she was subjected to horrendous non-consensual acts. She sued him also for retaliatory discharge. This is where this is because Giuliani made veiled threats in regards to her employment position in regards to reporting him. And lastly, she sued for unlawful termination of employment. It is important to note that the case is still ongoing and that Rudy Giuliani is still innocent until proven guilty. Therefore, all the assertions made in this video are allegations. allegations. allegations.